you've written that for the past few hundred years, technology has added jobs. Right. But now the balance may be tilting away from that, and technology may start to take jobs away. Please explain. What do you see occurring as the digital revolution continues as, right. as it affects productivity, wages, and employment? And what tells you we're in the midst of a long-term transformation and not just mm -hmm. a short blip on mm -hmm. the radar screen, even if it's the Great Recession blip? Mm -hmm. Well, when I look at the economic statistics, I see that, we're, that there's a great paradox right now. On one hand, we have record wealth. In fact, just this week, uh, it was reported that the United States hit a new record in net wealth, uh, over $77 trillion. But at the same time, the reality is that the median income, the income of the person at the 50th percentile, is lower now than it was in 1997. And that the share of the population that's working is falling. Jobs are disappearing. So you've got, on one hand, the economy working very well in terms of making the pie bigger, but on the other hand, a lot of people not sharing in that. And the reality is, is that if you look at the economic, basic economic theory, there's no economic law that says that everyone has to benefit from technological progress and from productivity. So it is with every technology that some people um, are made worse off. Now historically, that's been a relatively small section of the population. Uh, but recently, it's gotten to be a bigger and bigger section of the population. And that reflects the fact that the new technologies are so much more powerful, and they're affecting so many more different kinds of tasks, and they're improving so much more rapidly than earlier generations of technologies. We are really at a fundamental inflection point right now where um, you are seeing cars that can drive themselves, we're seeing for the first time that you can talk to your machines. There are problem-solving machines that can sift through legal documents better than lawyers can to find uh, uh, the relevant ones. And in each case, it's pushing back the frontiers of things that used to be only that humans could do. And as a result, we've seen what Andrew McAfee and I call the, the great decoupling of productivity from median income and employment. Historically, those trends rose together as the country became more advanced and more uh, technologically uh, productive, uh, median income and employment also went up. But starting in the late 90s, they became decoupled. And that's a real change. So both the theory and the data suggest that we are in a different era now. Well, one thing that's interesting is the digital and urban transformations are occurring approximately the same moment in history. Do you think that's a coincidence? Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think that. One of the main things that digital technologies are doing is they're dramatically lowering what economists call search costs and transaction costs. It makes it easier for people to find each other, for people to share ideas. But it also uh, has some interesting effects in terms of the way that people group together. I've written uh, on what we call cyber balkanization, or some people call the filter bubble, this idea that you can use technology to filter in the things you're interested in, but by definition when you're doing that, you're also filtering out other things. We choose what to focus on. So th this is something we need to think more about how to manage the way that technology is changing the way people interact with each other and the way ideas mix. You've said that you're a digital optimist. Mm -hmm. How does the optimistic scenario unfold in this, in this yeah. moment of dislocation, creative destruction? Technology is having some enormous effects on our ability to produce wealth, but it also uh, is um, substituting for lots of different kinds of labor, and it's more cheaply, more efficiently, even higher quality in, many, in a growing number of tasks. I I'm optimistic because I think that there's no inevitability to any particular technological trajectory. I don't think we should try to slow down the technology, but I think if we speed up the rate of reskilling of people, the way that we use our organizations and our institutions to have people work with machines or race with machines as opposed to competing against them, that we can create not just a bigger pie, which is almost inevitable with the, the improvements in technology, but also shared prosperity, more people participating in it. The key, though, is that it's not going to happen automatically. We have some, some choices that we can do to, to improve those outcomes. Such as? Well, so some of the things that we can do is we can do a much better job with education. We're just at the cusp of beginning to use digital technologies like massive online open courseware. Perhaps more importantly than replicating the best materials is the fact that 
these digital technologies will allow us to measure and understand what's working much better than, than before. So education, I could say a lot more about that. That's certainly one category where we can do some improvement. Um, there are others like boosting entrepreneurship, better matching of people to jobs. Um, and if we work on those areas, we'll be able to get uh, more people working than, than would otherwise happen. And you're saying this globally, not just for the US. This is absolutely a global uh, phenomena. I mean, another great force that's affecting us is globalization, which is, of course, partly driven by technology. Workers in low-wage countries are even more in the bullseye of automation than those in America. What do you see occurring socially, economically, politically, if cities, as communities, businesses, and people say, let's not change anything. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for this moment to pass. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there certainly are some temporary phenomena going on right now, like the Great Recession and the business cycle. I think the roots of this disruption that we're seeing in the labor markets and elsewhere um, are much deeper, and they have to do with some fundamental technological changes that are only going to accelerate. Those improvements in, you know, whether it's self-driving cars or being able to speak to our machines um, are just the tip of an even bigger tidal wave of changes that we'll see in the next 10 years. The best option we have is to try to speed up our ad adaptation to the technology and to get ahead of it. And that's going to require much more effort in thinking about uh, urban planning, organizational studies, uh, economics at the national and individual levels. All of those things are going to require much more attention than what we've been putting into them so far.